much in terms of fighting for you. I don't, mm. They have really good roach taking potential on Larvi now as well with the Beastmaster, so... Um, I expect someone to pick up an early medallion, whether it's the Tusk or the Beastmaster. Just yeah. trying to look for that early Roche. I feel like Gambit needs so much from this last pick. Like, they need something which can Ooh. help them do Roshan. They need something which can help them take objectives, like towers around the map. They need someone to team up with a tie to be able to give them a bit more team fight damage. And the idea is going to be Shadow Fiend. But Ninja Shadow Fiend. I mean, I'm, I'm right. down. Alright, I'm down as well. Yeah, this is a hero which can do all of those things, really. Yeah, they found it. They did it. Good job. This Razor pick shows that they, they really want to end this game at a, you know, a relatively quick time as well. They yeah, are... have you put the timer on themselves, but they're more than happy to do so versus the Medusa. The SF's a nice pick as well, though, against the Razor in the mid lane, just because even if your damage does get drained, you have the uh, Razors to be able to secure last hits. It's not a great matchup still, especially in, you know before you're level 3 or so, but you can always go back to the jungle and flash farm if he needs. I just feel like this Gambit draft is really greedy. Like, their supports are greedy. Yeah. They have three heroes that kind of need a little bit of time to come online. It's uh, going to be interesting to see if Na'Vi can get the ball rolling before this Gambit draft really gets the momentum it needs. Yep. Nyx, baby. It's, it's basically just the momentum game for Na'Vi. If they can find the momentum and keep it going, then... They will crush Gambit esports, but Gambit, you know, they need to get a lot of. They need to get a good start on the Shadow Fiend, which versus the Razor, he should. This isn't a matchup he struggles with. And uh, we'll see how they take it through on the mid game. It's going to be these mid game fights, which are so, so important for both teams. How do you, uh, there's a Nyx, dude. I'm so excited. It's like an okay Nyx game, though. I wouldn't say it's great. Just. How do you just pick Nyx now? What's happening? It's new, new patch, new rules, anything goes. Yeah, true. True, true. It's been a uh, while since Na'Vi's played, though, an official game, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's been a long time. So they, but, uh, pretty sure they have been invited to everything since Megaphone, so... I was going to say, they came second at the Winter Clash, didn't they? It was only to Liquid, who uh, just stomped everybody. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> Interesting to see them play again. They've uh, had a lot of time. Obviously, they weren't at the last minor or major. Let's see if they've uh, storing strats ready to go. I'm sure they have. I'm sure they've used their time wisely. Gambit, though, they've been uh, in having quite a lot of practice throughout these uh, qualifiers and such recently. Um, you know, open qualifiers for uh, the major, and then open qualifiers for ESL1 Mumbai as well. Came second at the minor as well, didn't they? So. It'll be, uh, it was Gambit, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure. 30 seconds to I don't remember. E e e Ehome beat them in the final, I think. A little quick Google. Find out. <laughs> nice cheeky little ward from the tusk here. That's that's pretty sick, actually. Going to the uh, medium camp there and just placing it through the trees. So, for some serves reason. serves correctly. <laughs> Well, runes are going to go um, completely equally to a piece. Look what Na'Vi's cores are doing in the mid lane, though. They're all just waiting to... Th like, this Tusk is trying to scout out who's in the bot lane. But Tide's been hiding in the trees really, yeah, really carefully. Because they really want to get this uh, Beastmaster in a 1v1 against the Tide Hunter, And then they can just try lane against try lane On the, on the Na'Vi side. Now, oh, this Slark and Beastmaster aren't really sure what to do. They're kind of just stuck around in the mid lane waiting to see who turns up and then they're going to run to their lanes. Yeah. I mean, do they think that Gambit were trying to do something clever, like put the tide mid or something to avoid the slark? It it was either going to be one side lane or the other, but they weren't sure which one it was oh, going to be. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, okay. And they just went to go from there. Gotcha. Just want to get the right lane matchups is all. No, they're putting the slark against the, the tide. That's the uh, matchup yeah. that we yeah. talked about before. Actually, okay, they're actually just running dual lanes. That's interesting. I thought they'd just keep the Beastmaster by himself. But... It happens. And they will get the matchup they want as uh, tied up versus Chris Lights. Gambit, don't look to be uh, making any big effort to swap this around just yet. No, I think they're, they're going to be 
they're going to be quite happy with this. I mean, Ty got the first uh, couple of creeps without much, uh, too much harass from anybody. Yep, yeah, early level two, and Grisly takes a ton of damage trying to harass up versus the Tide there, just not winning that trade at all. Uh, it takes a uh, takes a little bit of time for Sight to start winning this matchup. You know, Tide is still this beefy early hero in the start of the laning stage. More interested to see how this mid lane matchup goes, if I'm honest. And uh, Magic has six eyes already. He's uh, about a half a level half a level ahead of the, the SF. He's having a, a great time in the mid lane so far. But I think when you play this matchup, you have to be playing you know, from ahead as the Razor almost straight away. It's very important. See, he's just stealing 56 damage already. You know, there's not really too much Afro Ninja can do in this here here in this mid lane. Yeah, I mean, he's always got that uh, Shadow Rays to work with though. Uh, he's got the nine. I was gonna say he has like eight damage. That's, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, very good. <laughs> Navi seem to be coming out ahead in the laning stage a little bit though already. Not by too much though. I mean, Deuce is getting farm, and I think it's for Gambit. As long as Deuce is getting farm, then they can't really be complaining about this uh, laning stage too much. We said Afen uh, can always just go back to the jungle and uh, flash farm if he needs to. And uh, Ty seems to be having a, a relatively good time as well, considering the uh, the lane matchup that he's against. Yeah, he's doing pretty well. That first lane of XP really kind of helping him out here uh, to lead up versus the Slug. I was interested to see if people would... I, I mean, I knew people would still pick the hero about how relatively, uh, you know, popular this uh, Tusk pick would be still. After the tag team, mm. it costs 70 mana instead of 40, I think it is. So it's uh, not quite as strong as before. Can't spam it out quite as much, but obviously still a very good hero. Yeah, it's going to take more than that to uh, knock Tusk off meta. Dude, this Razor has 12 denies. He's, uh, he's really starting to pull ahead. he got coming on the Courier here as well, is it? Yeah, he's got another Wraith Band coming out as well. Only going to make him stronger. Honestly, still doing better than I thought, though. Oh, top lane as well. They used the shards on the Nyx. Yeah, tag Arabus team comes out, buys them a bit of space, but the tag team doing a lot of work, especially combining up with that inner beast. Not enough to get them the kill though, the tower does force them back. Gotta be careful up here. I mean, they're doing a really good job of controlling the creep equilibrium on Gambit at the moment, so that Lucia just gets to farm under a tower a lot. Not really afraid of too much of a die from the Tusk and the Beastmaster. When they're, you know, they can't really fight you under your own tower. The DD spawned on the bottom side of the river as well, so uh, if either of the mid laners can get their hand on that, to give them some kind of laning advantage would always be nice. The bot laners are yeah, going on tide. That. Which... Yep, one's going to be your first blood coming through. They actually got rid of they actually got rid of the pounce damage though, didn't they? In the, the most recent thing, so they did. Uh, uh, these guys, oh my uh, god, FNG, what the fuck? <laughs> what just happened? Sat there in the illuminate. What are you doing, Navi? I mean, they obviously didn't see it, but I that did a lot more damage than I was, than I was expecting. I mean, I was just kind of like sitting there, just like, okay, they're gonna move. They're gonna move. They're gonna. Nope. Okay. All right. All right. Double kill for FNG. Fine. Jesus. FNG's the carry now. Oh, it's, 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 it's early in the day, you know. They've just woken up. <laughs> They still need to get their get their heads in the right place, you know. You know what? It's it's only, it's only a coddle. Oh god. Tark's actually Tark's actually Tark's gone for a second point in essence shift, which I think is definitely the right thing to do against this tide. Um, I think you probably go uh, mid lane. Afro could be in trouble. Does get the race off onto magical, but with two coming in, Soneko joining the party as well. That is going to be Afro taking a fall in the mid lane from the early rotation from Navi. Can you answer a question for me? Yeah, always. Why did Frost Shield not get nerfed harder? Um, because Ice Frog, you know, he needs to look after his other icy brethren. Oh. He's just looking out for his, his fellow kinsmen. That makes a lot of sense. You're welcome. Uh, Tide, is he going to be in trouble here? Are they going to use this pounce, um, holding the Dark Pact in case the Anchor Smash comes out, but it doesn't. Tide, not really in any difficulty here. He's going to salve himself back up. He's so a they get... They gave a sentry to the Shadow Fiend mid, and uh, they knew that because the Lich rotated from the uh, bot lane that they were more, most likely going to have the ward next to that medium camp in the mid lane, and uh, he did get a nice D ward. So uh, Navi not going to have any vision in this mid lane at the moment. 
It's gonna be a wards little bit more souls? difficult. Say that again. The wards have souls? Yes, I think so. Hmm, interesting. You just got a free soul. Cool. Very big. I think it depends what uh what set you have on for the for the wards. Oh, yeah, some of them so look like more like people. Fish. It definitely yeah, yeah. has a soul, but all right. <laughs> That's good to know. Uh, meanwhile, the top lane, we haven't looked so much up here, to be honest, but it's a, it's a pretty dull lane. Not very exciting. It's just Medusa versus a Beastmaster. Like, eh, Medusa, not, I'm having an alright time, I guess. Beastmaster having a pretty good time, but it's Beastmaster. He's pretty strong in the lane right now. Going for that, uh, Vlad's is as expected. Pretty normal stuff. It's going okay, though, for Gambit, honestly. This Nyx is level four and a half, and it's only seven minutes into the game. I'm uh, interested... Oh, mid lane as well. They're going on SF. There they go. Three magical getting so much damage here, but immersion gonna get the return kill onto the enemy mid laner. Snix is just reaping the XP. He's like, yes, my SF died first, so I get all the XP from this razor kill. Yep. Next Nick, 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 Nick. that level six. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get that vendetta online all the sooner. Is Max and Spike Carapace? This is the point I was just about to make with his levels. I feel like Nix is one of these heroes that really needs levels to be able to. Uh, uh, utilize his full potential, which you don't usually get. And, uh, if, you know, if your mid lane keeps dying before you in fights, then... Yeah. Reap that XP. Always helps. Always helps. Uh, how many stacks have we got going for this Medusa? Oh, we've, we've actually had a couple, but they've all been taken. Hawk is blocking getting as well. Dive top lane as well. I mean, is this a dive or is this just Blizzy kind of saying, hey, what up? <laughs> uh, I think if he had mana for Roar, he would still go, but the Mystic Snake just came out. Oh, that's uh, put him in an awkward situation. Now Immersion comes in. Another Mystic Snake doing a ton of damage. Aphra dies in the mid lane, and Blizzy will die here at top. Uh, yeah, looks like it was another rotation in on the Shadow Fiend. Aphra, uh, you know, we talked about him needing to be the kind of tempo controller, the man to plan this game. And uh, Navi doing a pretty good job on shutting him down so far with those two kills, or maybe even three they've had so far on him. Yeah, three deaths to him, zero and three. Crystallize just picked himself up a Midas, by the way. Midas Slark. Brown Boots Midas Slark. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, it just helps keep his farm up as well, farm up as well. Especially if he wants to play aggressive, like uh, a Slark. If you can play in the enemy's jungle, you know, be aggressive all the time with your Shadow Blade pick up afterwards. True. Think this you Midas fall behind. I I exactly. Yeah. Tower. Having the Midas to keep up your farm. Finchy gets another D Ward mid, and he's now level six at nine minutes, which is crazy for a keeper. The tide TP'd away to top lane, so he got some XP, and then he TP mid and blasted a wave away from the SF. <laughs> Your boy got a double kill, so you know he's 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 feeling it right now. This is level six as well. I mean, they want a fight bot now. Yeah, they do. They do put down the sentry though. They will see immersion here. Immersion seeming to uh, realize here that maybe things have been uh, botted out for him. It's a really weird looking net worth graph where we've got. Um... Oh, okay. Medusa's ruined it now. But we did have the entirety of Gambit all blocked <laughs> together, and then it was like a Gambit sandwich. Gambit sandwich. Cool. They've they actually put the tide up against the Beastmaster top lane now, and they've just said to the Medusa, okay, you just go and jungle for a little bit. You need you to uh, farm a little bit more safely at the moment. She's not farming particularly quickly, it has to be said. Dyer's middle is under attack. Trying to take this ancient stack, but these creeps are just healing. The battle for the uh, rune, they're gonna try and throw down the Will of Wisp to order to secure it or at least try and find something here. They at least find two, or who are they? He's actually getting away to the high ground here. Immersion Ooh. trying his best to chase, gonna use that Vendetta and that will find him the kill. But Snako did get both the bounties. Yeah, they're not one Can they get the plus one? Like... He's so fast. Snako going for it, stun does connect and Afo's there with the razors. Uh, Afo really needed that gold as well. He's uh, fallen behind quite a lot. Good for him, you know? Like, yes, I finally survived a fight. Did it, guys. I wonder what Magical is going to go for on this Razor. Fast items. Fast. Gotta go fast. So he's got the Yule's queued up. Isn't that what you know, Seb used to do on his offlane Razor all the time? I think he was the one that was a really big fan of his Yule type. Yeah, it's really nice to have an interrupt but when you're versus a uh, Shadow Fiend as well. Even versus the uh, Medusa also. You know, she throws down that ultimate, you can just throw up into the air. And your woes are gone. Very true.
You should start. I love this Quelling Blade purchases on Dusha as well. If you're not doing this, if you're playing Dusha in pubs and you're not buying Quelling Blade, by the way, should uh, should definitely get on it. It's a very good item because it works on all the split shots as well, even if it's only seven damage. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> this uh, beast master is going to be that annoying hero now that just sits in the bot lane. Oh, top lane, they're going untied. Don't think they can get in though. Ooh, Ravage Ooh. thrown out. They want to go for this one. The Illuminate's going to rip through and find the kill to crystallize Gambit with a stylish little play there to kill off the enemy Slark. If you saw what just happened mid, Immersion just was vendetta he just walked up to him while he was in this, pressed carapace. When Razor's passive went off, it stunned him, and then he just walked away. It's just a power play, you know? Yeah. It's uh, showing everyone who's boss. The damage supports are very much uh, feeling very dominant Ooh, top in this lane. game. Okay, I think they might get him this time. Yeah, it does look that way. They've got a pretty good lineup for eating tides, to be fair. I'm a little bit surprised still about this Crystallizes uh, Midas, though. They have Radiant decent early game, you know, push potential with the Razor, the Beastmaster. They can get this first Roche online like we talked about before, then they'd be really strong. But it seems Crystallize, you know, decided that he has a good late game matchup against the Dusa, so he's not really caring. Yeah, yeah that's true, that. but it's always interesting to see a team just when they have kind of put themselves on this timer, to then buy themselves an item which is kind of waiting for oh, immersion, being cheeky here. Uh, using the following in the spike carapace and then stunning out magical. Uh, he might pay the price for that. Coming in for this one though, he does reflect the uh, punch there from Chu, so uh, that's going to help him out a little bit. But magical, ton of a damage stun. immersion. Yeah, it gets both of them with a stun somehow. Trying to get away again, has the spike carapace, does throw it out quite early, but again, he's actually going to escape this one. All right, immersion. <laughs> This is why you max out the spike carapace on Nyx, especially as a support. It reduces the cooldown so significantly. It goes from 25 seconds at level f uh, level 1, and it reduces by 5 seconds every level. So it goes down to 10 seconds at level 4. And you can just spam them out in fights. It keeps you alive for so long. And especially with this uh, Chakra Magic from the Keeper of the Light, reducing the cooldown. Nyx is going to be so annoying to deal with. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Uh, we going for this mech as usual. Greaves actually. Full Greaves build. Yeah, it's pretty standard for him though. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think you need to do this every game. If you're rushing Greaves every game. Don't do that. There are definitely games for it and games not for it. Well, I'll give uh, you an example of a game where you don't want to go Greaves. In a solo game because you can't push as a team. Nobody understands what teamwork is in solo games, you know, so, uh... If you're, if you can afford to be a little bit more greedy, then, uh... Like, if you're more of a position 1 Shadow Fiend than a position 2, then, uh, you don't really want to go for this Greaves build, but Deuce is the position 1 this game for Gambit. So, uh, this, this, uh, this SF's more of, like, a, a utility hero this game. Yep, it does him well to kind of tank up and, uh, be able to make space. The Medusa uh, just by being in people's faces, Radiant which the Greaves allow to do. Gambit are invading this top rune, expecting some Navi heroes to be here. Uh, no fights will be committed. This is one of the best things about Keeper in the bottom lane, by the way. Oh, my tower's getting pushed in. Oh, oh no, no, never mind. No, it's fine. But he knows that Navi are all hovering around here now. They have this ward up in the top lane. None of them are showing on the map, so... Yeah, you see Blizzy's looking for the Keeper at the moment in the trees. <laughs> Just cutting through with a Quelling Blade. Oh. Nyx has run into the Razor. This bottom main tower is going to fall to Blizzy and Crystallize, though. It is eventually, yeah, but I mean, the, all of Na'Vi's heroes are committing to kill it. So I, I don't think uh, Gambit mind too much, you know, they can't really defend that tower. So difficult to defend your uh, side lane tier twos at the moment. Oh, immersion! Getting the kill onto Snake as he comes to try and get that uh, frost shield on the tower. See, that's what would have happened if Gambit had tried to defend the bot tier two. We're smart. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. They're actually just carrying on going down here, Navi. Though they use the roar. Okay, 
Oh, they go deep and find immersion. Is, is nobody gonna... Okay. Afro does TP back eventually, but the tier 3 is taking some significant damage. Treasures. I love them to clean up these creeps, but yeah. Tower down to 1200 HP nearly, just under 1300, so that hurts. Harvey thought uh, Gambit might have been doing Roche there, so they got back yeah. very quickly by the looks of it. They were away in this bot lane for a long time, Navi, so it was potential for Gambit. This Nick's actually rushing Spirit Vessel. Okay. I feel like they need a blink on one of their heroes. Uh, okay, Tide's building the blink instead. Okay, that makes sense. They need some way of just forcing fights and initiating in the first place. It's, it feels so bad trying to play a game of Dota and not being able to like make initiations and make plays. <laughs> See that immersion though. He's all about those chat lines, dude. It's fine. What are Nyx's chat lines? They're just all variations of Nyx. I have, no, 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 they're not. There, there are some other ones as well. I can't remember what they are, though. It would be amazing, though. Like, like, do you mean like Wisp and Phoenix, where it's like laughing Nyx and sad Nyx? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think that should be the case. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like there's going to be something brewing in the bot lane. Yeah, they drop the, uh, drop the Willow Wisp, but it goes down. Ooh, FMG dropping really low. Does actually fall, but Chu might die as well. He falls? I'm Chu. He's going for it. He's trying to escape, but Immersion and uh, Afterlife hot on his heels here. Uh, we're also going to make things difficult. And there comes a Gush to finish the job. I just realised that he wasn't running towards his own base, so that wasn't really going to work, was it? No. <laughs> <laughs> running for a quick release. I like this uh, item choice by the hack as well on the Deuce. He's built the force stuff. It's a good choice up against the Slark, obviously. Just lets you get away from the pounce. Kind of the only real thing that he's worried about at the moment. I guess if they use Roar on him, he can, you know, the Tide can just go in and commit Ravage anyway, so. All about keeping this Deusa alive, keeping the Deusa farming. I don't know how many times I've seen a Razor that just does okay in lane and then just doesn't do anything afterwards. Get a dollar every time. <laughs> be a very rich man. Yeah, we all would. We all would. But again, you know, Gambit happy to play the slow game right now. You know, the less pressure Navi are putting on them, the happier they are. Yeah, 100%. But it feels like Navi are happy with that too, to just keep the Slark farming. They yeah, think it's an this, interesting strategy. I think this Slark against the Deuce is okay. So, they don't mind going to the late game. Which I'm surprised about considering the rest of their heroes in the draft. Yeah, this Keeper of the Light and Nyx are... These supports are going to scale so much better than the, the Tusk and the Lich. You see what Chris Lad's got queued up? Yeah, he's going, he's going for that defusal. He is. I think when you, when you pick the Slark against the Duty, you have to go for this build, though. Especially when you gain Agi so quickly with the with the Essence Shift. You burn that mana from the Duty very quickly. Nyx gets his 90 GPM talent. He's loving life. Got his high Nyx gameplay down here Ooh, in the bot lane. Oh, FNG. Ooh. The Guardian throws down a sentry and realizes the trouble he's in and immediately Navi jump on him and tear him apart. They tried to make a move on Blizzy in the bot lane as well with the Tide and the Nyx, but didn't have the damage. It's so slow pace, this game. 17 kills in 20 minutes. This isn't CIS. I didn't yeah, sign up for this. Is this. What's happening? Some Chinese Dota right here. I want these like 50 minute, 20 minute, in 50 kills in 20 minute blood baths. That's the CIX yeah. I know and love. Oh, and he actually took the presence aura effects buildings on Afro. Okay. No, the uh, the aura did get buffed in the most recent patch to four, five, six, seven instead of three, four, five, six. Especially with the physical damage from the Deuce being available, having that split shot attacking everybody with seven less armor sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. Certainly does, and uh, you know, it's all about creating this uh, kind of differential between your team and theirs, because you've got the Guardian Greaves buffing up your own team, and then Presence of the Dark Lord affecting the other team, which makes the enemy really need to take you out. 
But you know, it's a Shadow Fiend. He's not a hero you like killing, because not only is he a pain in the ass to kill with these Greaves, but he's also going to release a Requiem when he dies, so... Yeah, absolutely. Both teams have that Vlad's as well, still. Everybody was like, oh, Vlad's, right, has got nerfed. Headdress isn't part of it anymore. Yeah, but it's still a good item. It's still very good. Yeah, build... Vlad's was one of those weird ones where everyone was like, oh, Vlad's is crap. What, how many times they need to buff Vlad's until it's viable again? And then all of a sudden, everybody's picking up on every hero, like, over, like, the course of a week. It's also because armor, you know, became a much bigger thing, though, as well. So, extra armor that the Vlad's gave was really nice. Much more than before. And they're actually going into the Roche pit on Gambit. Yep. This dude's just hit level 15. They have Ravage available. The, uh, the Willow Wisp available as well. No, they have the team fight advantage. Especially yeah, in this area of the pit. Yeah, Navi to fight with this, uh, with his Ravage, so... Okay, I'm gonna go for this, maybe. Smoke pops. Uh, magical waiting on that high ground. They have the Hawk, so they see what's going on here, but... Yeah, but FNZ's winning outside the pit. He's got a Willow Wisp and actually Gambit. Coming around the back here, looking for the Slark. They actually have the stunner onto him. Meanwhile, on the back side of the fight, they're trying to go for FNG at the same time. BKB pop from Magical, going to now to ignore the, ignore the will. Now wants to kill FNG. FNG with the immediate buyback, though. Wants to come back into this fight. Does not want to give up Roshan this easily. Magical's just committed his BKB to kill a position 5 keeper that's just brought back into the fight, so... Yeah, that, that Get the now Roche will go down. Ravage being used, they jump in. This is actually it? the one to take the Aegis and get the kill onto Roshan. And, uh, well, the fight's going pretty chaotically right now as Crystallize jumps in, trying to find an entry onto the Hag. Meanwhile, Blizzy will fall, but come back to life. Raw being used out onto Afro. They will Snake. take him down, but Illuminate doing so much damage. Hitting onto four. Down goes Seneko. Uh, Magical not looking too pretty either. We'll get the kill onto each other there as uh, Magical and Afterlife take each other down. I think up onto the high ground for Blizzy here. As he just gets himself to safety. Doesn't want to play around too long here. So, interesting fight. Um, the fight looked amazing for Na'Vi at the end, and then all of a sudden they got hit by a four-man snake into a four-man Illuminate. Then like, yeah, and they just all they all just died. Yeah, <laughs> and that was that was that was the fight over at that point. That was. I mean, if Blizzy hadn't have got the Aegis there, that fight would have been an absolute disaster for Na'Vi. Yeah. But they committed the Ravage, but Blizzy blinked over it, so he blinked on top of the tide after the Ravage had already been used in that in the short area around him. It was really nice. Tusk, I think Tusk blinked in as well and tried to grab it, so had two chances instead of one. You have this sentry in the middle lane on the Navi side. They see immersion here. Crystallize and immersion both invis, deciding who's going to make the first move. Uh, a bit of a standoff here. Uh, Navi actually smoked. They decided that it's, it's time to fight now. Lark coming in on the back lines. Got himself an Invis rune, but his Midas is also off cooldown, which, yeah. you know. You want to fight while this Ravage is down. Yeah, but uh, I think Gambit seemed to be aware of this. Straight away, Crystallize comes in. Actually, the Raw cancelled by the blinding light from FNG. Lizzy, the Raw ruined and uh, doesn't really know what they want to use it on now. This is going to be a full disengage from Gambit, and Navi get nothing for their aggressive Radiant's rotation. Tower, this is the thing, if Tide sits in the front line, they, they can't really kill him in, you know, before he gets all his spells off. It's very difficult. This meat shield that just, you know, you can crack his shell off the raw. Just don't have that kind of burst damage from any hero that can bring this Tide down. There's just not really many heroes that can deal with a Tide Hunter. You just about grabbing that bounty, going to secure... Navi, three bounty runes at the 25 minute mark, so uh, help them out get a bit more gold in their favor. And, you know, the real loser of this mid game does seem to be the Shadow Fiend here, as he's actually dropped behind even the Beastmaster in farm. Yeah, definitely, but at the same time, Dusa just keeps farming. And how many times have, you know, in this patch and the last patch, have, are we going to see a Dusa that just farms, free farms, and uh, just wins in the late game? Yeah, also, she now picks up that Hurricane Pipe, but she had the four stop all along. It's such a good item to have versus a Slark. It's very nice. Just having that Manta available as well. They don't really deal with illusions very well either. Nope. I don't normally like, you know, Manta do so that much, but it's okay. Okay here. Yeah. You'll accept it. But if you just pop Manta, the Sark doesn't know which one's real at first. It just caused confusion, cause chaos. Obviously split push lanes as well. Help try and extend towards the late game. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. 
Oh, Slark actually went back for a BKB before the defusal. Okay, so he has this 10 second BKB available now. Obviously needs it versus the Tide anyway, I think, up against the uh, Keeper of the Light as well. There's so much magic damage on this Radiant side. Yeah, so, there's a lot of spite in that Snake and the uh, um, Illuminate doing so much work. Yeah, absolutely. They are slowly gaining their advantage though, especially with this Midas and Crystallize. They are getting there. SF builds after this Manta that he's got queued up. Oh, do you know what I want to see? Imagine, right, he he, he, un he unloads a three combo Shadow Race, and then he gets Chakra Magic from the Keeper of the Light, and then he just blows another three raises. Like, all on top of... How much damage would the last raise do? Can you do the maths for me? Uh, yeah, it'll do, uh, 486. 486? Oh, that's just wrong. Okay. Bottom I tried. <laughs> think it would do 700 magic damage. Yeah, that's what I said. This race, which is nuts. I think Nyx just gets this free stun on the razor. It's so obnoxious. Uh, Chris is running right. through immediately gets blinding light away. I'm not even sure he was going for anything there, but all the same. Will Whisk Will Whisk. committed actually interrupts the uh, jump somehow on Crystallize. And they're going to get that kill. Down goes the slot. Bell's managing to get his BKB off. Lich going to be picked up as well. Razor gets the TP out. Two trying to run away. He's got the Spirit Vessel on him. Going to use that Snowball. Afterlife. Let's get a little Ooh. bit further forward. It's a nice little bone from him there. Two into the tree lines. Afterlife chasing. Shard's going to block off the way, but the raise. It does connect. After we'll get that kill. Uh, pounce away from the light, Jared. It's, uh, that's just how it works. Yeah, I did not yeah, know that was a thing. You know when, uh, you know it's summertime. You've got this, uh, you know, it's in the evening, it gets a little bit dark, and you've got that little bug light thing, and the bugs just keep hitting the light over and over again. That's, that's just what happens. But it happens with fish as well, apparently. Okay. Uh, yeah, that is true, actually. People people go fishing in some areas where they hold a, a light to the surface of the lake and then just hold a net out and all the fish jump into it. Exactly. Get where I'm coming from now. I do, I do. <laughs> really hope, if it gets to this point, that Afo gets a level 25 talent for the minus 5 aura. I, I think there's no reason why he wouldn't go for the cooldown reduction. I really want to see somebody do it. The uh, the aura does minus 12. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the, it's pretty good. It's just the other one's ridiculously yeah. good. What you're saying cooldown reduction is absolutely insane, especially when you've got these uh, two activatable items so far. It reduces the cooldown of the Greaves as well. Oh, being Deusa. Down the bottom. They want to find themselves a Deusa, and they certainly will. The Hag taken care of. Goodbye, Snake Lady. They, yeah, they put the ward on the high ground just to get the initiation as well. That was really nice. Ooh. Really well played by Na'Vi. And we have to get this mid-tier 2 here as well. Deusa does have buyback, but you, you really don't want to be burning it here. If you can get away with it. They don't have Ravage up for 30 seconds though, so Na'Vi might look to make something happen here. Will be thrown into Gambit here. Can they blow him up? Will it Wisp landing onto three. Not bad. Inside the snowball they go. They're rolling onto FNG. Crystallize jumping on him as well. They'll manage to take down this Cottle. Still no buyback on that Medusa. Afro trying to make it to the high ground here. The Shadow Fiend. Can he get away? Punched up. Trying to get the Ultimate off. Trying to do anything, but it's not going to happen. Navi, they take three heroes here in the middle lane. I don't know whether Gambit thought Medusa was going to buy back there. But uh, the hack says no, 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 it's fine, guys, you're okay. Gambit decided to try to take a fight anyway, four versus five. And uh, I'm not really sure what's just happened, because this game's been so close for a long time. You know, all of a sudden, one mistake, Shadow Fiend and Keeper just don't have buyback. Na'Vi pushed super quickly with this Beastmaster aura. This tower's just gone. Yeah, it's, it's, it's blown up. It's like attacking so quickly with a 23 as Essence Shift. Very hard to fight into. They are being very careful. They, they know the Ravage is back up again now, though, so... I lose a Tier 3. This is going to open up the Shrines for Na'Vi to take just before the next Roche spawns. Take away as many of those TP points as possible. This Slark, all of a sudden, though, is absolutely massive. B can be the Diffusal and an extra ultimate orb working towards that Skardi now. So it's going to be so much more difficult to run away from him when he has that Skardi up. If the Diffusal slow wasn't already enough. 
Yep. And even with the uh, two, you know, cores, Slark, even when they were equal a couple of minutes ago, 15k each. Nato. It's a slow death for the Lich, but a death all the same. Can be get something at least. True. Boy, this Slark's playing though as well. He's playing so aggressively because he knows they can't really stop him. Radiant structures are fortified. Live the dream. He finds this arcane room. Here we go. He's going to love life here. I think Shadowblade has almost 100% uptime with this. 19.6, 14 seconds. Okay. I lied. Never mind. Sorry. God damn it. Even Blizzy has a BKB now on the Beastmaster. Well. Wow. We, we talked about how good of a BKB game it is. There's no reason not to, really. Especially when he's kind of finished up everything that he would need to anyway. Yeah, that's true. Both schemes, teams scouting out Roche, still 45 seconds, still he's back up. Yeah, both teams want to hover, just hover around the pit now. It's really important just to shove lanes out from the Roche pit, so that when the Roche does spawn, kind of force the other team to go and deal with them. And just lets you take the free Roche for yourself. Radiant's bottom shrine has fallen. Immersion hiding in the trees, maybe looking to smoke, pop some smokes or something like that. But a Navi will show in the mid lane. I'd go through Shiva's guard, interestingly. Just something to slow down this slark, I guess. Counteract the okay. Beastmaster aura. Just auras. Which, which offlaner can build the most auras by the end of the game? You know, they have like a like a little bingo card. Yeah. They can tick off all the auras on. What? They uh, find the Razor. Uh, razor, BKB pops, more used onto the Medusa here. Apo gonna chain up that ulti and fire it off. Full stuff out onto the Hag, they're keeping her alive, but she's pretty low on mana right now. Stone Gate even being used here to try and keep them alive. But Gambit should be able to get out oh, of the catch. The okay, uh oh. Immersion drawn back in. Does throw the sound inside. Carapace Ravage lands onto three. Down go two and Snake just like that. Meanwhile, on the high ground, they've got Crystallize held still with the Will O Wisp. Does manage to make the pounce down to the low got ground. Vessel onto him. He's in trouble. Gotta comes off dust as well. Immersion sliding in for the stun as well. Not even needed. Crystallize goes down and Gambit take three heroes. A terrible engagement for Na'Vi. Said they caught the Nyx, but he got Carapace off just before. So uh, I think the Nyx caught them. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a trap. Nice and easy entry for the Tidehunter to jump in and just blow up the supports. Oh, and if they can get this Aegis on the Deuce as well, this would be absolutely massive. The butterfly now as well. That's only managed to be a contest. Only been able to kill her off once already this game, which is when she got caught off in the bot lane. So to go through her twice in one fight does not sound like fun. He did take the Mystic Snake cooldown. That's interesting. Where's Blizzy at? He's, he's nowhere nearby. No steal this time. Blizzy can. What do they want to do with this Aegis though? That's the question. I think, I guess the goal is to try and take these last two or three outer towers on the dire side. I mean, this tier one in the bot lane is still standing at almost full HP. Cool. Because the Beastmaster's been shoving it in constantly, that lane. Yeah. The hero is so noxious. Boars are very good. It's even got a Necro book for this game. It could be worse. Yeah, I know. Other oh, the illusions are just giving the aura and the Vlad's aura to the boar though at the moment in the bot lane as well. Doesn't even yeah, need no, to be right. there himself. I <laughs> know, uh, they're doing a great job. Going to force someone back as well, so... It's just man. so frustrating to play against Beastmaster because you always have to have someone back to defend. You always feel like you're at a one-man disadvantage because of the Beast. He doesn't even have to be there, as we're seeing right now. Picks up the gem as well. I try and close out the map a little bit here, Navi. Yep, they need to. I like this pickup. Brave, but it's needed. Yeah, if you swing the fight from being a 50-50 to a 60-40 in your favour, then just by having the vision control, definitely want to go down that route. Builds a four stuff on Nyx as well, actually. So Nyx is pretty farmed now. Did have the axe queued up before, but I'm glad he's gone for the mobility instead. It's all about the positioning in these fights now. It feels like. Moke up from Gambit. They're looking for something here. 
They've got the blink dagger on the next, and in they go. Immediately finding the roar comes out straight away. Emergent jumped upon and just assassinated in front of the side of Night. Oh, they got the heels off onto Dahake. He does have that Aegis. I'll oh, double force him away, triple force him away, slide away from the danger, Dahak. Shadowfiend's picked up a four star as well. <laughs> I, I thought the Nyx's um, reactions were a little bit slower there, but it was night time, so Na'Vi had full vision advantage with that ward on the high ground. And it did pop one down, but it was just after the Nyx had been initiated on, so... This is the vision control that we're talking about. You get that pesky bug out of the fight first, it would always be nice, but they can't really capitalise on it. Oh, in they go, jumping forward onto Magical here. Quick snowball out from two to try and save the day. In comes a willow with though Medusa doing so much damage to these two as they're stuck inside the will. The chain frost, sorry, the uh, frost shield gonna do a bit to keep them alive, but not enough as Afo and Jay will scoop up a double kill here in the middle lane. Darby are finding it so difficult to take any kind of team fight here. Like it's four versus five, but it doesn't matter. Razor used his BKB when the Knicks went onto the high ground before, so it doesn't have it for this fight. They can't fight into this Ravage will wisp It's so difficult for them. Oh. Top lane, here we go. Raw comes out onto the Nick Assassin, but Afterlife focusing up on this Lich. Sinister Gate's going to buy the Nick a so. bit time, but he's dead. Yeah, Slark is in. Can they find the damage onto Tide, though? No. Gambit fighting back hard. BKB pop from Blizzy, trying to get his way through the trees here. Can't quite make it, though. Trying to get to the river, getting low on HP. A couple more right will be needed. Chris Lai's trying to block uh, that one. I'm not sure what he's doing here. Kind of just throws himself into the fight. Has to pop that BKB. And now trying to CP back to his base will cool. just about be successful. Uh, I mean, they try and go on this Immersion Nyx, but again, it, they can't even kill them without the dudes from the SF being there. It's so difficult. And uh, cast Chris that lead to throw up. It crystallizes just funny having such a hard time getting into these fights and getting off his damage. When his BKB wears off, he has to try and fight into this will of wisp Ravage, and it's just not working. Oh, they go onto the high ground here. Nyx just jumps into the base to try and find somebody. Uh, she's going to start chipping away at the tower here. Beastmaster does have buyback. Doesn't really want to commit it, though. This Frost Shield just slowing the push down a little bit, but doesn't really feel like it. Oh, Crystallize, though, taking away the mid wave. They're going to try and fight through this backdoor protection here on Gambit. Can they take this Rax? Slowly getting there. Frost Shield comes out to keep the Rax alive. Then it's the Gaze as well onto the Nyx. They <laughs> really want to get this Rax without the creeps. And they do it. It's getting closer. Yeah, they, they finally do do it. Pitch with the Frost Shield, not even enough with backdoor protection to stop them from taking Rax. I'm sure that needs to be changed, but we won't talk about that. Hunting as well, straight away the Gambit. They smoke after taking this mid tier 3 and they're walking towards the bot lane where Slark is. Here we go. Okay, they're just, they're just going to back off, push the lane in. They still have the Sages, so they want to take all these towers, like we mentioned before. Even if they did get the mid racks before, no reason to not take the free gold down in the bot lane. Try and force fights as much as you can. And Dusa actually picked up the Daedalus. Okay, so that would indicate to me that she's going to go for the modifier talent at 25 instead of the extra mana. All about that raw damage now under hack this game instead of just being tanky like last patch. Doesn't matter if you don't have the extra survivability when you uh, still farm ridiculously quickly and can hit like an absolute truck. Arms for the dead. So Naka goes and TPs and takes a bot rune, a uh, top rune, sorry. Regeneration. They are going to be able to trade the bounty runes two for two at least on Na'Vi. Don't fall too far behind. Lich has an urn as well, that's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that combination on hero before. The item what, hero Lich combination. Urn? Yeah, Lich urn. I don't think I've ever seen hmm. it. Yeah. Usually position 4 that goes for it instead, so... I mean, I guess they could be going for that Spirit Vessel, but I don't really know who for. Uh, oh, they find Crystallize up in the top lane. He has to be giving TP! Oh, he doesn't make it! Your Slark's dead! 90 seconds! He does have the buyback, but... Kind of, uh... Not what you want to do right now. <laughs> they didn't even commit a Ravager or a will wisp No, that, that was a free Slark kill. They, uh... Okay, well, Dyer's top shrine has I'll be you're in trouble. I'm just going to put it out there. 
Yeah, that's that's an understatement. <laughs> They've uh, tried to go late versus a Medusa Shadow Fiend, and uh, this is the consequence. I don't know if it's a fault in playing it or just a fault in strategy, but I just, it's it's really weird to me. Like, why do this? Why play the game this way? In a vacuum, in a one v one, this start is very good against the Medusa. But it feels like they haven't really thought about the team fight advantage and the support scaling much better than the Na'Vi's You've support. got a Razor in the mid lane. Who wants to take it late? I don't know. I was, I was saving my questions to kind of watch because, you know, I'm on, you know, I'm a caster. I'm a watcher. I'm not a doer. Oh, uh -oh. War comes in, though. Onto Medusa. All the same. BKB pop from Blizzard. You're trying to come forward with the hack. Pretty damn tanky as the double force comes out once again. Flying the hack away from the fight. He does commit the stone gaze. Chris Lies running forwards, trying to chase here. There's okay, a turn around. Navi needs a jump in. Chris Lies trying to block the hack here. The hack though, plenty of health to work with for now. Ravage. So comes in and there's your Ravage coming down. Chris Lies taken down by back use. He is dead for 120. Now Snake are getting taken down as well. Magical four staff to the low ground. Trying to make his way back up to the high ground. But blinding light throws him back. Half life on top of him as well. The Tide Hunter just sitting on his face. Uh, Grazer trying to come in, trying to get his side linked off, but doesn't happen. They disarm the Medusa for the time being. Shadowfiend trying to get that ulti up, not quite working, but the sh I mean, the tide just sitting on the front line. Uh, Shadowfiend goes off in the back lines. Just the one. Ooh, two, caught Achoo. outside the phase of blinding light, and Medusa will find that kill onto the tusk. Crystallize has no buyback. This fight's gonna be super hard if Navi want to try and take it. Ravaging uh, Willow West Bar down. The link gets cancelled straight away. I tried trying to get a piece of the action as well. Just gonna hit the tier fours as well. Magical. Yeah. Oh, pretty low here. The crit comes through as well, but thankfully Frost Shield is a really good spell. Don't know if you knew. No idea. Yeah. True. Uh, Gambit though, they kind of smell this game as being over. They know this side has no buyback as they pile everything onto the Medusa here. She's getting low, down to 300 HP. Can they keep her alive? They're trying to slide her out of this fight. Disarmed up as well. Navi are chasing here without a slot. Can they do it? Oh yep, God. the hack will die. Lizzie though, he's now on the receiving end as Gambit just chased him into the trees. His spirit vessel on him. Immersion will need one more hit. Yep, they will get that kill. Buyback's coming through thick and fast. Lizzie back into this one, but the Medusa buys back as well. Slot. Still 24 seconds. Gambit plays the time here. If they go onto the tusk, they will blow him up. Now they little look towards the Beastmaster as well. He's separated off his journey back to the base. But the Ancient is going to be the target. The Hag's doing his best to try and bring down this Ancient. But it's the Disarms. It's the Frost Shield and the Disarms. Just drawing them so much time. But it's not enough. Five seconds till Slark is back. And